All right, well, with a half hour to go before things officially kick off the new trading week, let's get some perspective from Scott Wren. He's senior global equity strategist at Wells Fargo Investment Institute. Scott, always nice to see you. Busy week for earnings. I would imagine that's something you're going to be watching as close as anything else. Well, it is, John, and uh, good morning. And, you know, you, one thing you have to remember about earnings, though, is earnings is what happened in the past. And ideally, all they would do is confirm what you are already thinking, which is, you know, in our case, that earnings are weakening. Uh, you'll probably see eight of the 11 sectors uh, have uh, uh, have negative comps uh, against the year. So, uh, and even really... Uh, in most earnings cycles, you kind of want to pay attention to what the companies are saying. But I think I would question even the quality of that guidance because they're very conservative. They don't want to go out on a limb. And so, you know, you've got to do a, leg work, a lot of legwork yourself and, and just uh, hope that earnings are more of a, a confirming type of an exercise. When you do the legwork right now, what's, what's your conclusion about how investors should be um, positioned these days? Well, I tell you, you know, John, as you and I have talked many times here over the last year, uh, we're playing defense. And, and actually, what we've done lately here is we're playing even a little bit more defense. We've moved some money recently out of uh, equities into fixed income. We're playing this range, you know, the S&P 500, let's call it on the upside 4180, 4200, and on the downside 3700, 3700, maybe a little bit below that. So we think we're going to test the downside again. We think that, uh, you know, the Fed's not going to cut rates this year. We think the market's pricing in uh, earnings at too high of a level. Uh, this credit contraction that we see, I think, is a big deal. So uh, we're playing defense. We're taking another step toward that. And not that we're going to be married to that position, but we certainly expect some downside here in the next, uh, let's four to six months, something like that. Our audience, obviously, very familiar with the U.S. markets, but uh, deeply familiar with the, the Canadian makeup as well. In terms of buying the indices, the TSX versus the S&P 500, it's a different makeup. And then, obviously, it's a different makeup if we start looking at investment opportunities oh. globally right now. Do you think that some of the thematic sort of positioning for you, oh. you know, you mentioned being defensive, uh, should that influence the way by which investors think about where they where they're invested worldwide right now? Well, I think for us, you know, we had been very underweight. I, I think it's been almost two years or a year and a half anyway, uh, developed international. Uh, we've brought that up to a more neutral rating. I think if you look at, uh, let's say, a valuation comparison, um, uh, developed market international looks uh, better than it has against the S&P 500 in quite a while. So we didn't do anything too aggressive there, went from uh, uh, from a very unfavorable rating to neutral. And so for us, uh, you know, bigger is better. I think, um, you know, the S&P 500 is probably your most dependable equity index. We're still not uh, interested in, we're still underweight uh, emerging markets. And I think, you know, our theme of just, uh, you know, we're, we're very fond of short-term fixed income right now. Like like I said, this is not a secular call. Uh, this is something that is going to have a, a relatively short life. So uh, we're very favorable on the short end of the curve uh, here in the U.S. Uh, bigger is better in terms of equities. And so for us, um, defense is the way we want to play it. Uh, at least over the course of the next couple of quarters. Let's stay on that fixed income side for a second. So uh, it's no secret because interest rates have gone up, uh, particularly with, I, th I think you were referencing shorter duration debt. You're getting paid a lot more today than you would have a couple of years ago. Uh, but I know a lot of people after la last year's challenges, both in equity and fixed income investing, wondered if 60-40, you know, these traditional splits would make sense. Um, some people have been bringing that narrative back. It sounds to me like you're, you're, you're still perhaps longer term favoring equities over fixed income. Def, definitely. I think over, you know, as we as we normalize here, whatever that is, I'm not 100 percent sure I know what normal is anymore. But <laughs> as, as we as we as we normalize here and as we look forward and you look out over the next five or 10 years, uh, you know, I think 60, 40 is going to be popular. Now, we're not there now because we're overweight fixed fixed income relative to stocks just based on where we think we are in the cycle. But I think that uh, what you're going to find going ahead is that 60, 40 is not dead. 6040 works over time. Um, we, we will be leaning more towards equities over time, but just not for right now.
All right. And then I guess in terms of earnings, we talked about that. We've got a we got a Fed decision on interest rates uh, early next month. Anything else you want? I mean, keep keep hearing, obviously, in, in Washington, the debt ceiling uh, worries. Uh, what else is on your watch list right now? Well, I, I tell you, I think uh, I think the market's wrong uh, that the Fed's not going to cut this year. We've we've got them holding steady at five and a quarter to five and a half. So we're looking for May and June quarter point hikes. Uh, I think you're going to see um, more news about credit contraction, credit standards going up. Um, we're going to hear more about that as these banks continue to to release earnings. So that's going to be important. And I think the combination of those things are just going to be too much of a headwind uh, for the economy. Rates high for long, credit contraction, earnings are too high, the estimates out there. Those things are going to cause problems and road bumps for the market as we move ahead here. All right.